So uh, I might actually lose my job by openly talking about this. Um, I think that the academic system, the way that it stands, the research game, the, the, the research career is fundamentally flawed. And I think it's actually broken. I think about all of the wasted resources that go on and the inefficiencies that go on because of people trying to work towards things that they don't really know exist. We have this problem where researchers, academics, whoever are working in an arena that they don't really understand. And then we have other people assessing them that don't really understand the work either. And so we have this, this idea where people are grasping at things. And this results in all sorts of things that are not good. There is a lot of politics. Um, a lot of people just go online, look at the number of people that talk about things like suicide um, of PhD students. Um, look at the number of people that talk about depression. I don't know what the rates are, but they are pretty high. Um, look at, at the anxiety that people feel. You know, I, I laugh about this. I laugh about it with a with a friend of mine. When I went through tenure, I had um, heart palpitations for about nine months. My heart would flutter. And um, it, it was weird. I went to the emergency room when it first happened and the emergency room doctor looked at me and says, anything going on in your life? And I said, well, I'm going through tenure at this moment. And he was like, ha, ah. <laughs> live in a university town. And he knew right away. Um, and I think about all of that as what are we doing here? Why are we actually going through this? Is there not a better way? And I think there is. I think there is by sharing stories. Um, first of all, that's why I do the reciprocity. This is why I talk to you. And there's so many people that watch this and I thank you, by the way. Um, but also I think we can change how research is actually done. I think I can create a platform um, that changes that. And I think that's what the reciprocity platform is. But I can't do that alone. I need people's help. I've been thinking about this for a long time, is how do I get people to believe in this and to understand what I'm actually trying to do? If you work at a university, um, can you right now, today, contact your university and see if the reciprocity project can be part of it? If you know of people that can use this, um, can you help is what I'm asking. And I'm really struggling with this because I think the inefficiency that we have in the university system in the research game is is very high. And I also think about the, the critics of the university system, the sort of so-called woke movement that's going on. And I think that there's actually some credibility there. I think not necessarily, I don't like the sort of messaging that they're sending, but I think we need to start recognizing some of these emotions that people are feeling and we need to change it. And I think having a platform that walks people through easily and anybody can actually do it and anybody can join and then they go through and they participate and they have fun and it's exciting and it changes the whole experience where you get to interact, it helps you along the way. We don't have any of that kind of stuff. And I'd even go so far, I want to sort of challenge the academic community at this moment. What if we had a unrejectable journal 
or art in process. And I think, you know, I think about this is like, what would that actually look like? And it would be so rigorous along the way. It would be so helpful along the way that this platform would basically walk you through and get you to the point where your chances of getting published um, are significantly improved. Your chances of writing a research proposal, a grant, whatever, is significantly improved and it, you know, it's, it's just so much better. I th think about this all the time. Why are we allowing this sort of standard process that has existed and was put together and cobbled together 50 years ago or whenever it started, why are we allowing that to happen when we have technologies and systems in play that can change that? I think about that all the time. I think about why are we allowing graduate students to go into these programs and um, go through just the craziest angst. I know of literally everybody, everybody that ever goes into it and they start talking about their stories. There'll be tears in their eyes. Um, why? Why? And I think this is my purpose in life is to change that, is to channel how I feel, um, to channel the uh, desperation, the sort of survival feelings, the panicky feelings into creating something that makes sure that nobody goes through this. And I think I could do that. I think about me, you know, little old me, and grew up in the middle of nowhere, um, and, you know, had the only thing, and, and the only reason I became a professor um, was by chance, but also I had amazing parents and an amazing family that was there and had unconditional love. And I think that is missing from the academic community is unconditional love, support, um, being able to say your, you have your voice, being able to get recognition. All of these things are missing. And, you know, it's kind of like a kumbaya thing. I get it. <laughs> but I think if anybody's in the game, they understand where I'm coming from. They've, they've realized and been there. You just gotta be there just a little bit and you understand the desperation you feel, the um, panic you feel, and maybe that's all cognitive, and maybe that's all learning because you're going through this process and learning things, but I don't think that's it. I think it's institutionalized within the social norms. And I think if I ruffle a little bit of feathers by creating the Reciprocity Project and repeatedly presenting this message. We can change this. We can build platforms. We have technologies at this moment that can change this, that can make us so much more better off. But I need your help. I need you to share this message, share this video, um, tell people that are in universities, watch the Reciprocity channel um, I really need that. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know how else to change this. It's me, one person. If there's people out there that want to participate, volunteer at this moment because they have no money, but eventually I want to create this into something. Eventually, maybe I'll get venture capital funding and all of that kind of stuff to create this into something. Eventually, if there's universities that want to participate and fund it, $1,000 here, $2,000 there, $10,000, I am reaching out to you. Um, I'm at a point in my life where I 
think we need this change. Um, and I think I want to be the change that needs to happen. I think about all of the people that go into the, the academic research career not knowing, they don't know, right? Like nobody knows when they go into it. And you go into it in the first few months, you're like, what the hell did I get myself into? And then after that, you're like, oh, okay, I need to assimilate. I need to, I, I need to abide by the social norms. And then I go into this sort of competitive mode and compete and elbow my way to the top. And then after that, you look around and you say, that's it? What the hell did I just do? Why did I behave that way? And I think that explains the academic career to a T. Maybe it sounds like Wall Street. If you don't know, people drop out of the academic career to go to Wall Street because it's easier. Um, and I think about that. I think about the number of people that can be improved, that we can change this. We really can. I'm looking for your help. Everything, everything helps. If you want to help with creating a, I don't have time, but if you want to create, you know, a page that's like a GoFundMe thing, which I did before, it didn't work. I think I'm at a different stage now. I'm, if you want to help, and if there's enough people that suggest they will help, maybe I could do that. But we need to change this. All right, take care.